we are going to figure out an inverse Laplace of s over s squared plus 8s plus 19. As we can see, we have a quadratic in the denominator, so we should try to factor this out, right? But let me tell you, we cannot factor this. And the worst thing is that this right here, it does not have any real root. So what we'll do is, we will complete the square in the denominator. And let me show you how to do that on the side here. CTS stands for completing the square, right? And let me write that down again. We have S squared plus 8S. And let me leave a space, all right? And then let's put down the plus 19 right here. Well, to complete the square, we have to look at the coefficient of the S, which is 8, right? And what we have to do is, we have to go ahead and do 1 half times 8, and then square that, and work this out real quick. 1 half of 8 is 4, and then square that, which is 16. This is the number they have to add right here. So let's go ahead and plus 16. But in that case, be sure you minus 16 at the end, so that way you can pretend nothing happened, isn't it? And then you will see this is going to be s, and then plus 4, and then square, and then 19 minus 16 is plus 3. And this will be your new denominator, and it will match the things that we did in the previous video, right? All right, so now we will see this is going to be the inverse of plus, and let me still put down the s on the top, over the denominator is this now. So let me write it down as parentheses, s plus 4, square, and then plus, well, here we just have a 3, all right? Even though 3 is not a perfect square, but you know the deal. We have to force it so that it looks like a perfect square. So for this 3, let me put it down as square root of 3 and then square. How is that? Right? It would be nice. And now, what can we do next? Well, well, as you can see, on the top, I only have s. But here, I have s plus 4, right? And you know we have to match this and that. So let's go ahead and do so. Let me add 4 right here so they will match. And be sure you minus 4 at the end immediately as well. So now I will break this apart for you guys. The first dot plus, or the first inverse dot plus will be s plus 4 right here over, let me just write it down better, over s plus 4 squared and then plus square root of 3 squared, right? And the next one is going to be minus 4. And then let me just take the negative 4 to the front. Negative 4 and then the inverse dot plus, like this. On the top now, I just have a 1 over this right here, which is s plus 4, and then you square that, and then once again plus square root of 3, square. All right? Okay, this is going to be the combination of e to the something and cosine of something, right? So let's put this down right here first so we can feel better, right? So you know s minus negative 4, s minus negative 4. Therefore, a is negative 4. And we will have e to the negative 4t because this right here has been shifted, right, for the cosine. And we will have the cosine. The b in this case is square root of 3. So be sure you write down square root of 3 and then the t like this, right? So this is that right here. And then for this right here, you know you have a constant on the top, so you have to make sure you must match this right here, right? Earlier for cosine, you match the s plus 4, s plus 4, which is great. But this is the sine situation, you have to match the square root 3. So let's go ahead, multiply the top by square root 3, and then divide that square root 3, so that we can pretend nothing happened. This is wonderful, because we're done. This is minus 4 over square root of 3, and we still have the e to the something, because this has been shifted as well, right? So e to the negative 4, t again, and this is the sine situation, sine of square root of 3 times t, like this, right? And this right here is it.